Well, hello and welcome to my channel, Tidbits and Company. Today I'm going over five design mistakes that we made when we designed this split bathroom for our kids. And these were mistakes that we needed to remedy, so we already have. So I will show you a bit of the before and the mistakes that we made, and then the after and show you how we fix them. And it might seem funny that I'm back sharing this space because I shared the reveal really not too long ago. But these mistakes <laughs> that I made when we designed this space were really driving me crazy. And actually, this split bathroom was one of the very first spaces that we finished in our home because um, when we moved in, most of the home was unfinished, but we had to have a bathroom. So we actually finished this bathroom first and we did it when we were in a bit of a rush and I think it rushed us into some design decisions that we ended up regretting. And so it was just a couple of things that really needed to be changed and made a huge difference. So I want to go over those with you so hopefully it will help guide you when you maybe come to a bathroom that you're designing or maybe it will inspire you to just kind of fix those things in your home that are really driving you nuts <laughs> and then just make them better so that you can just love the space even more. Sometimes fixing those mistakes really doesn't take a lot of effort in the end but it makes a big difference. So let's go over the five design mistakes that we, I made and then I'll tell you how we fix them. So first mistake was in the walls and the paint that we chose. Both the paint color and the paint sheen. Now if you're looking at this before footage, I think it is actually really beautiful. I loved the design choices that I made and so it was kind of hard to, to change some things and rip some things out. But they weren't functioning well and I knew it could just be a little bit better. So we did some kind of like planking on these walls about halfway up and would put little towel rods on them and I love the wall treatment but we ended up painting the lower section where the planking is a really dark color and I actually loved the color but we found that in this small bathroom space that is used heavily that dark color just always looked dirty like any amount of hair dust hairspray whatever it just built up so quickly and always look dirty and it also made this space feel smaller. Now I know that's pretty common sense in the design world, darker colors do kind of cozy up a space and make it feel a little smaller and so I thought I would be okay with that but the mixture of it always feeling dirty and grimy and small, I just knew changing out the paint color and lightening, up, lightening it up would make a big difference even though I did like that dark moody color. So I think I might actually consider that dark color maybe in another space in the future but for a bigger space and where it won't get dirty so quickly. But the upper half of these walls and for most of it in the second half of the split bathroom is just a nice warm white and I didn't have an issue with that white but what we found was that the sheen that we chose for the paint for both the darker color and the white was not great for a bathroom. Now I love a flat kind of eggshell matte paint. To me it is more vintage looking, more old world. I always gravitate towards more matte finished paints versus high sheen. However in this bathroom where we get a lot of moisture from the shower and of course hair products, that matte finish on the paint was not <laughs> functioning well. It always kind of got gunky and got a film on it. It was hard to clean and so it just always felt gross. So those are the two mistakes we made in the paint color and the paint sheen. So I will come back and show you the after pictures and tell you what we did instead to really make an improvement on these paint choices. Okay, the third mistake we made was with our tile choices. And this one hurts a little bit because you can see in these before images, the tile is actually gorgeous. It is a travertine tile and I love it. Like I still love it. We use this travertine in our mantle surround in a herringbone pattern. And we ended up originally picking just a square tile for kind of this first half of the bathroom. That's kind of the designated getting ready area. And then I picked like a subway tile shape, just a rectangle brick shape for the second half. And here's the story on this. <laughs> so I picked out the travertine, loved it, and I love the look of travertine with really big grout lines. To me it feels, it just feels like stone. It feels kind of old world and you know I love that style. 
So that's what we picked when we went to floor and decor. And I thought it would be fun to kind of mix and match those. And here's what happened. So we were finishing this bathroom um, and husband was in a really big hurry to get this tile done so that we could move in and get the toilet in and all that stuff so that living in an unfinished home would, would be more bearable. Well, I did not communicate very well when we picked out this tile. Sometimes I think he can just read my mind or he knows the best design practices. And clearly I need to communicate a little bit better on these kind of things. So. He came to this house, we weren't living here, and he installed the tile like he thought that tile should have been installed. Well, I actually wanted the smaller brick shape, rectang rectangular tiles installed in more of a staggered brick look. Well, he just installed them like in a row. That's how he thought it would be done. So I really didn't like the installation of that tile. It wasn't what I had in mind and I thought it looked kind of funny, but it worked, you know. <laughs> Once the tile is down, there's just no removing it unless you do damage. So we just lived with that. And then in this part, he just put the square shapes in a line as well. And I actually wanted those at a diagonal, kind of like the checkerboard floor look, um, where you install it at a diagonal or diamond shape. And um, he didn't even think about that. So from the get-go, I was a little upset. <laughs> well, not upset, but just bummed out that I hadn't told him that and made sure that he installed it as I had envisioned. But you know, all well and good, we lived with it. But here's the thing, this travertine tile with the large grout lines is a nightmare to clean. <laughs> that white grout and that, the thick grout lines constantly look dirty. It didn't matter if I got on my hands and knees, scrubbed it as hard as I could with a cleaner that would whiten the grout, Within a week, it looked brown and dirty again, and it just drove me crazy. <laughs> so I would probably avoid this travertine tile look with the, the thick grout lines for any like mudroom or entry area and any bathroom. It is just going to look dirty all the time, and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Didn't matter. I mean, I like to have the kids clean this bathroom and kind of manage it on their own. Well, they could not get it clean enough, so it always looked dirty. But if you had a space, maybe like a bedroom or a living area, or maybe even a kitchen, it would be all right. I'd probably be a little hesitant in a kitchen. But this travertine tile is gorgeous. It's just going to be tricky to clean if a lot of foot traffic goes in and out and a lot of dirt and other things. So great design decisions that just were not functioning very well. And I really can't wait to show you what we did instead. So let's move on to the fourth mistake that I feel that I made. Um, we have these two vanities that we put together and I originally just like to put towels on this bottom shelf. And it's great for like towel storage, it looks pretty. However, I quickly learned that in a bathroom where four kids are sharing, three of which are teenage girls, I needed more organization than just the little drawers and an open cabinet under the sink. Um, I needed more containment or I needed to section out where they put stuff, like the hair stuff or the, the eye contact stuff. And so I, I really needed to rethink how I organized it. So I came up with some great solutions there. But I want to talk real quick about the fifth mistake that I feel that we made, which was actually a very easy fix, and that is in the lighting. Now this split bathroom only has one tiny window above the shower. I wish we would have made that one bigger, but that would be a massive mistake to try to fix, so we're going to live with that one. But if you can put a bigger window in the bathroom, definitely do it. But a lot of times bathrooms are not outlined in the house where they're up against a big window, so sometimes the lighting you're just relying on overhead lighting and light bulbs. Well, what we originally did was for our light fixtures, we installed um, a light bulb that was more of a warmer white and we actually used a bright white light bulb. And you would think that that would just put off more of a brighter white. Well, it was actually really yellow and my kids hated the lighting. So I think we mixed that lighting with the darker walls and it was just really hard to see yourself clearly to get ready in the mornings and just kind of felt, um, I guess not very bright and flattering. So I will talk to you about what we did to fix the lighting situation to where I think it just feels a lot better. And I would say there were some like just decorating or storage function things 
that I didn't think about doing originally and that I've now done. So I'll show you some of those things. Hopefully it gives you some ideas. But let's go ahead and move on to the after of this space and show you what it looks like now and talk you through some of the things that we have done differently. So of course, the walls, the paint and the paint sheen needed to be fixed. So we played around with some paint samples and I actually ended up going with Revere Pewter. It's a very popular um, kind of brown gray that a lot of people use in their homes. And when I put the sample up, I thought it looked great. However, when we actually started to put the Revere Pewter on the, this um, planking, it felt too dark. Well, we bought a paint that was pretty expensive to get the right um, sheen and durability and I did not want to go and buy it again. So we'd gotten Simply White to redo the white in this space and what we ended up doing was just adding some of that white right into the pan or to the can of Revere Pewter and lightening it up. So I would say this is like a Revere Pewter half tint maybe and it just lined it up and once we did that I really liked the color. It gives me kind of this warm gray that um, works well for the space. Still gives me some contrast with the white because I wanted that, but it's just a little bit lighter. And I believe we had picked Simply White originally on these white walls, but I knew we needed to change the sheen. So we went ahead and just painted it over once more with the new paint and the new sheen. And I have to tell you just that decision of the different paint and different sheen made a huge difference immediately, even before changing the floors. Um, it's so much easier to clean. We did a satin finish instead of the eggshell or the matte finish, and it just wipes down so much easier. It's not super high gloss, so it still feels nice to me. It's not too glossy, but it just wipes down so much easier. The lighter color doesn't look as dirty, and it just is working so much better. So definitely get higher sheen paints for your bathroom and think about the color carefully and how it will work with dust and those kinds of things. So those, just the paint made a huge difference, but let's talk about the flooring because what we did here made another big difference and has already been functioning so much better. We actually had some of this black and white honed marble tile left over from our mudroom when we installed it in there. And I didn't have quite enough to fill the entire floor, but we almost did. So I just had to order a little bit. So it wasn't that big of an expense, which made Mr. Tidbits very happy <laughs> to kind of use what we already had and um, only have to order a little bit more. So again, I installed this checkerboard flooring at a diagonal. It's actually called, oh, what's it called? Oh, it's Harlequin. <laughs> so when you have the checkerboard look, but install it at an angle, it's called Harlequin Tile. And if you love checkerboard tile, like I do, I actually did a whole series on YouTube about picking out checkerboard flooring, where to get it, different styles, different colors, different installation, um, varieties. So anyway, if you want to learn more about checkerboard flooring, I really worked hard to create blog posts and YouTube videos to teach you about that. I think it's like a five or six day series. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more. But I already love this checkerboard flooring in here and it feels a little more cohesive since we have it just down the hall in the mudroom. So it kind of brings the house together but to clean it is phenomenally easier. <laughs> so we did do black tile lines and I already know from having it in the mudroom that those will sometimes get a little chalky white with the minerals that are in our water. But even with that little chalky white on the grout lines that are in this, it's, it looks so much better still. And I knew I didn't want white grout because I just knew those yellow so quickly and so easily. So I'm okay with some of this black tile sometimes looking a little chalky and I feel like that cleans up easier as well. So where I used to have to scrub this travertine tile on my hands and knees to get the grout somewhat white, somewhat white, this new marble tile is so much easier to clean. The grout lines are small. I had my husband do them a little bit closer together so the grout's not so prominent which just makes it easier to clean. And if you'll notice on the tub front we did travertine on the tub front as well to just kind of meld with the floor, 
but I knew I couldn't leave that if we were changing the floor. So what we ended up doing was buying some of the same tile that is in our shower surround. It's this pretty blue pattern tile, and we put that on the tub front, which I think looks really good just to have those the same. So those were the two biggest differences, and they made a big difference. So really happy how it turned out um, and just how it's functioning so much better. So the next thing I talked about is the organization, um, and that was a really simple fix. Instead of putting so many towels down here on this lower ledge on the vanities, I ended up just putting um, two stacks of towels. So there's four towels in total when we, fold, when we wash them and fold them and put them away, and four kids use this bathroom, so that works great. When they need to refresh the towels on cleaning day, they just grab the new ones that are folded, then we wash the old ones, and then replace them quickly. But before, we had about eight towels lined under here, which was more than we needed for this space. So I ended up just putting more baskets under this ledge, and they're like designated. So one has like the eye stuff for my girls, one for like all the claw clips and scrunchies. Anyway, we just put more baskets under here to designate things, and that way their drawers don't get so full. They don't just end up shoving stuff in these cabinets, and it just has kept organization a lot better. And that way, when they're getting ready, they can just pull the basket out, use what they need, and then put it back. And I think it's really helped the bathroom just stay a little more tidy, which has been great. Okay, let's talk about what we did to fix the lighting situation. So we went to Home Depot and discovered that they have light bulbs that you can actually change and adjust the color tone on the light bulb. So a lot of times you just buy a light bulb that's like bright white and you install it. And that's what we did. And we didn't realize that we didn't like the bright white in this space. So they have these light bulbs that you can actually adjust to the different coolness and warmness tones, which is amazing. So we bought those light bulbs, put them in, and then played with the lighting. And we ended up loving the cool white function. So if I were to buy light bulbs for a bathroom, and I wasn't sure which one, and it was closed in, not much natural light, I would definitely go with the cool white. I wondered if it would be a little too cool, but it's not. It just seems like the perfect, um, closest to natural light I feel like we could get. Even the daylight ones are too cool, and the bright white ones are a little too warm. So if you can find the cool white bulbs, or the adjustable bulbs, that is amazing. And I believe the adjustable light bulbs were just the same price as the other ones or cheaper. So it was definitely a win-win there. So that is what I re recommend for your bathroom lighting. Okay, now I'll just talk you through some of the decor things that I added in here after we've been using this space for several years and figuring out what will function best. I definitely recommend putting any soaps or um, like face washes, lotions, or any kind of cosmetic that you have in the bathroom, keep it contained in a tray. So that's what I did. I like thrifted some trays and I've just tried to contain all those products on that tray for my girls. And occasionally you have to wash those trays, but it just protects the countertop surface a lot better and keeps like from water from piling up or just products being strewn everywhere. So containing them has worked really good. And the other thing I figured out I needed to do, so in the part of the bathroom that has the shower, the toilet, and a little vanity, we noticed that water was like spilling over the edge on this freestanding vanity and it actually did a lot of water damage to the wall. That was another reason it was really good for us to kind of sand that down, remud it, and then paint it over with the new, the new satin paint. Um, so that water would spill over from kids like washing their hands or doing who knows what. <laughs> and then it was damaging the wall. So I just got this cute little thrifted um, plate that I love so much. And I'm just setting the soap container on there. That way when they put, they wash their hands, get some soap, it's just dripping on the plate. It actually has a slope, so it's been doing a lot better at keeping the water from spilling out onto the vanity countertop, which has just helped with a lot of the mess. So there's a suggestion for you. And another little fun storage hack, I had this cute little thrifted teacup and saucer, and my daughter likes to use a special soap for her face, but it's like a bar soap. And if you don't have somewhere to put that, it can really get the countertop messy. So to kind of keep that more stylish, we just put her face soap right in this cute little teacup on the shelf in here, and it works great. I've also added a basket of like hand towels and washcloths in here. I didn't have that before, and so they didn't really know what to grab to wash their face or to clean themselves in the shower. So just keeping a basket there with the towels 
has been really handy for them and it looks super cute. And of course there are just some other fun little details that I added in the shower. Instead of doing the under the shower head caddy kind of storage thing for the shampoos and conditioners and whatnot, we ended up putting some angled shelves in here which has worked a lot better. I always felt like that got really gross and just caked on with soap and stuff when it was under the shower head. So I really prefer storing all the, the soaps and things on a shelf that's further away from the shower head. That's worked really great. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing the space and the little details that I've added and then also some of the bigger design decisions that we had to swap out to make it feel better. I feel like we now have it in a place where this space doesn't drive me nuts. The kids can clean it and it looks clean and it's functioning really well. So I hope you've learned something and have enjoyed seeing how we've fixed these things. I appreciate you watching today. If you want to know where any of these sources came from, check the description or just head right over to my blog post for this space where I will probably add more details that I forget to mention on the video, but then I can write them up over there, link you out to the sources and help you kind of slow down and see the space and the difference that it makes. So I hope you enjoyed doing that. My blog is over at tidbitsandcompany.com and you will also find the direct link to this blog, blog post in the description below. I would love to hear if there's anything in your bathroom spaces that are maybe not working very well for you and what you would rather do. I think it is so helpful to talk about the things that may, we maybe regret doing and then how we can fix them. Um, sometimes it just takes making those mistakes, living with it, and then realizing that you should have made a better decision. So if we can learn from each other, I would love to do that. So let's chat in the comments, chat with each other, and learn from each other. Thank you again for watching, and I will be back very soon to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home. <laughs>